My daughter runs out. Mom always jumped up like a pigeon whenever she saw one of our neighbor's kids on TikTok. And she just loved comparing me to other kids who showed off their talents on social media. Did you hear her voice? She's definitely going to be a star one day. Don't you want to be a star? All these books you're reading is not going to make you famous. Books give me knowledge, Ma. There is nothing more important than knowledge. We should be proud that our daughter is a genius. Shh. Do you want everyone to know that our daughter is a Miss Know-it-all? You know Mr. Mafia runs this town. If he finds out that she can calculate sums faster than him, we will be humiliated in front of the entire community. Hello everyone, I'm Sparkle from the Philippines. Please like and subscribe to STA, where the best storytelling is made. Because I was born a genius, my teachers loved me to bits, and sometimes even let me lead their classes. I simply loved books, learning and teaching other kids, but not everyone was interested in books in my hometown. Being popular on social media is what everyone wanted. Hey everyone, take a look at the new video on TikTok. Hey, phones away. If you want to pass the test, pay attention to Sparkle. Her method is actually simpler. Many kids looked up to me in school and had a lot of respect for me. But there was this one boy who always got on my last nerve. He was the son of the big bad Mr. Mafia who ruled our hometown. During recess or whenever he saw me, he was a pain in my neck and his name was Tiger. Like, who names their kid after an animal? Hey, smart girl. I have a ton of homework due on Monday. You can do it since you're the smart girl. <laughs> hey, Tiger Breath. I'm not your servant. Ask your dad to hire a tutor, since your family takes 20% of everyone's hard-earned money. Hey, how do you know what my family does? It doesn't matter. I am the smart girl after all, so I guess I know everything. Well, if my dad finds out that you're acting too smart for your shoes, there will be a price to pay. Tiger's dad was a big businessman in town, and everything he did was against the law. He disliked anyone who knew more than him. And his bimbo son kept blackmailing me to do his homework, or else he will tell his evil father that there is a genius in town. I couldn't risk that, because my dad, who worked as a fish packer at the local fish market, would lose his job. I loved my dad so much, and would do anything to protect him. Mom was always so negative towards dad because of his job title, the fish packer. The air was fresh as pie while you were slaving away at that fish place. When will we ever buy a car like them folks across the road? Why do you always have to compare us to everyone else? Maybe if you could appreciate what you have, a car will fall from the sky. Oh, my family was right about you. You will always be nothing. Well, at least I try my best to pay for everything. Why do you have to be so mean to dad? He just got back from a long, tiring day. You and your father are the same. I'll never be happy in this family. Unless we start our own show, like the Kardashians. We're just a family of three, and plus I don't want to be famous. Fine, maybe I should start shopping for a new family. Oh. When I finally fell asleep that night, I shot my eyes open again at the sound of screaming outside. What the freaking flies is up with these idiots? Everyone stepped outside of their homes and followed the ruthless gang, because this was Mr. Mafia's way of calling a meeting in the middle of the freaking night. So we all stood around looking like puppets, waiting to hear what the beast had to say. Good evening, good people. I am sadly here at this hour because someone from your neighborhood forgot to pay their taxes. Anger boiled up in me as this man spoke. He had no right taking from all these innocent people. Everyone remained silent. Fine. If the culprit will not present himself in the next five minutes, then no one will sleep tonight or until the poison comes forward. I took deep breaths to hold myself from speaking my mind, and then a nerve struck, and I couldn't take it any longer. The hard-working people already pay their taxes to the government. If we all stand together and lay a complaint to the High Court, Mr. Mafia will be charged with treason. Dad held my hand while Mom held her head in shame, and then the wicked Mr. Mafia stood face to face with me. You're just a little girl. How dare you disrespect me? You disrespect every one of us every day, Mr. Mafia. I know what's right and wrong, and what you're doing is beyond wrong. Please, forgive my daughter. She has this condition where she... She just opens her big mouth. So you think you are smarter than me, little girl? I'm actually born a genius. So yes, I do know a little more than you. Fine. If that's the case, I'm sure you can stop being the breadwinner of your family. Because as of tomorrow, your fish pack and father will be jobless. How will we survive now, Miss Genius? Come on, let's go back home. But he hasn't dismissed us. It doesn't matter now. I don't have a job. I felt bad for Dad, but I knew if I could use the school computers, I would be able to find Dad another job on the internet, out of this town. 
This was not the end of the road for us. The next day, as I tried to enter the school gates, I was stopped by the security guard. Sorry, Sparkle. I can't let you in. Why not? You was ordered by my dad. I told you there would be a price to pay, but you didn't listen. I don't know. I was just trying to stand up for everyone. Well, no one stood up for you, and now all your knowledge will go to waste. My dad is very powerful, and he has more money than you can ever imagine. You should have just stayed in your lane. Tiger sounded almost like an intelligent person speaking. He surprised me. I guess his dad controlled him too. I couldn't go back home because mom would talk too much, and I wanted so badly to help my dad find another job. As I walked in the mall, I stopped outside a glass window where there was a line of television sets inside the store and the news was on. And then it struck me. The media! <gasps> Mr. Mafia can never be more powerful than the media! I ran back home and tried to avoid mom, but she had no mercy. Why are you back so early, Troublemaker? Do you know that I can't even sit outside on my porch and drink a cup of tea without everyone looking at this poor house? <laughs> Why was I cursed with a child like you? Oh, please, you were being so dramatic. I'm proud of what she did. That man treats everyone like a doormat. Someone had to stand up to him eventually. And don't worry, Dad. I have a plan. Everything will be okay. Later that evening, I used Mom's binoculars to spy on our neighbors. I needed strong Wi-Fi access, something we were not privileged with. I knew it was wrong, but I had to get their password. Once their lights were off, I ran downstairs with my heart pounding at the thought of breaking into someone's house. But I managed to see a loophole. The neighbors had a window which they struggled to close, so it was left slightly open. I took a deep breath and went in. <sighs> okay, here goes. When I was finally inside, I was lucky to find the laptop on the dining table. And I was even more relieved when it didn't request a password. I quickly found the Wi-Fi code, and just when I was about to make my exit, I heard something viciously growl at me. Nice, doggy. I totally forgot about their dog, and if I wasn't so busy with my books, just maybe I could have been the dog's best friend by now. I'm sorry, doggy, but I need this code. Please let go now! I looked into the dog's eyes, almost pleading with her. And by some miracle, she let go of me and out I went. The password worked. It was the only way for me to start my own social media platform on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. I couldn't sing or dance or do anything entertaining, but I could speak my mind. And this is what I did. Every child has a right to an education. Although I was born with a brain that is qualified to be a professor of science, math, and literature, I still need to go to school. In my hometown, everyone is afraid, but fear grows because of a lack of knowledge. We all deserve the right to speak our mind. My video went viral, and the next day when I woke up, I had reached more than a thousand followers. And then mom screamed out my name as if there was a fire. Sparkle! When I went downstairs, I found Tiger and his dad there. Mr. Mafia didn't look too happy. What game are you playing at, little girl? Oh, so I'm guessing you saw my social media video. Soon the whole world will know what a horrible man you are. I think it's time you leave my house, Mr. Mafia. Dad bravely stood up for me, and then Mr. Mafia suddenly pushed Dad to the ground. And before he could pounce on Dad, Tiger held him back. Dad, let it go! Don't tell me what to do! Have you learned nothing from me, son? But if you leave people like this to walk all over you, then you will be taken for a ride down the pit of Luzaland! You need to learn to take control! I felt kind of sorry for Tiger. No wonder he was such a jerk at school. His father raised him to be mean. Sparkle, I told you before my dad is very dangerous, and he can get you and your family banished from this town. But he has already made our lives so difficult. I'm not even allowed to enter the school gates. No one will hire my dad. So how will we survive? This is all you're doing. Why couldn't you be like all the other girls? Quiet and- And famous, beautiful, naive. When will you ever accept me for who I am, mom? I have a plan on how to help you. Maybe at the park later this evening. I didn't know if I could trust Tiger, but I needed any sort of assistance to get Mr. Mafia off my case. Dad insisted on accompanying me for my protection. We both waited nervously, and then Tiger appeared. You brought your father along? You don't trust me? Of course we don't trust you, boy! Dad, calm down. Tiger is not his dad. You're much better than that, right? I don't know about that, but the only way you and your family can be protected from my dad's wrath is if you leave town or you help him make more money. I will not help your dad make any illegal money. Yes, I second that, so we might as well leave town. And go exactly where, Dad? The house we live in belonged to Grandma. Are there any other family members out there that will take us in? Look, you won't be making money illegally. My dad wants to know how to trade, but we don't understand all the information or the tactics of trading. I don't know anything about trading. And besides, your family owns several businesses. Plus, you take money from the poor. Why does he even have to trade? 
That's my dad. He always wants more, and then the more is never enough. I found it ridiculous, but after discussing with my dad, we agreed that I would help him every day after school on condition that my dad gets his job back. So after Tiger spoke to his father, he agreed to the plan and I was allowed back to school. Everyone missed me, and I missed them, and Tiger seemed to appear everywhere. Hey, Sparkle. Um... What? Do you need me to do your homework? I'm glad you're helping my dad. Everything is going to be fine now. Okay... Are you sure that's all? Yes, yes. I have to go now. Bye! Tiger acted strange, and after school when I was at his massive mansion, he was nowhere to be found. It was just me and Mr. Mafia. So, Sparkle, did you study all the information on how to trade? Yes, I did, and I think it's very simple. Good. Here is my laptop. How much do I start with? Let's start with the entry level and then see how that goes. I allowed you into my house because my son says you can help me make billions. So let's see. This was a lot of pressure. What would happen if I don't make enough money on his trading platform? I stayed in one spot the whole day trying to make Mr. Mafia more money. So, how much did you make today? Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty? Oh wow, you are a genius. I'm keeping you forever. Haha, ha, very funny. It's late, I need to go home. My son is outside waiting. He will drive you. When I was in the car with Tiger, he looked very uncomfortable to be around me. Something was definitely up. Okay, stop the car! What? Are there cops behind us? What happened? You! What's up with you? You were weird at school, and you're weird now. Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Tiger, you are not your father. I can see that you want to be a good person. Please tell me what's going on. My dad is trying to make more money so he can buy the school land and start an illegal oil factory. And he spoke to your mom today. We will be married after we complete high school. My jaw dropped speechless, and then anger started fuming inside me like a chimney on fire. What the freaking chihuahua? Your dad is so evil! And I'm sure my mom gladly agreed to the wedding proposal, but I will not marry you! Oh, is there something wrong with me? My dad always says I'm a good for nothing. I can be better. Tiger, it's not you. We are still so young and their plan is so ridiculous. They can't just plan our futures like that. Yeah, you're right. Tiger was a boy who was put down by his father all the time. He didn't love himself. And when I moved his hair away from his face, I was taken back at how gorgeous his eyes were. Wow, you have beautiful eyes. I never noticed before. My dad says they're girly eyes. No, I love them. I wasn't madly in love with Tiger. I wanted him to know that I cared. I can help you expose my dad for all the illegal things he's doing. Tiger was willing to put his father in prison. I guess he too had had enough of his narcissist power trip. Tiger and I were on a mission during the Katawaiian festival to bring Mr. Mafia's corruption to an end. Tiger showed me where his father's secret office was. He started by opening an old rusty door outside a very creepy building. Are you sure we're safe here? I got you. I won't let anything happen to you. I felt instantly attracted to Tiger when he sounded so brave. As soon as we were in, Tiger immediately went to the bookshelf and pulled out a tape. My dad has been using this tape for many years to blackmail the mayor. That's how he gets away with all the crime and taking people's money. Our town is overdue for a new mayor. This right here is a recording of how the mayor spoke about the real plans he had for the people. All he cares about is himself. How do you know about this tape? My dad used to bring me here all the time when I was little, and when I was around nine years old, I witnessed everything and saw where he hid the tape. He took my childhood mind for granted. Tiger let me listen to the recording, and the mayor was planning on destroying many educational facilities so that he could make more money by building hotels for tourists. I was so mad. Tiger, I know just how we are going to expose your father and the mayor. Tiger and I were lucky enough to get out of that dingy place without anyone seeing us. I took him back to my place, and thank goodness the house was empty because mom also loved all the festivals. Hello, fellow citizens. Today, most of us shall receive our freedom and the bad people will be locked away. Before I show you what our mayor really feels about us, I want to say only this. Education gives you power to make a better world, and money gives you the power to control our better world. But enough is enough. Tiger and I exposed the mayor and his dad through social media, and justice finally played its part. Our communities were no longer forced to give away their hard-earned money unnecessarily. And I could have been a doctor, a scientist, or anything I wanted, but I chose to teach. I loved sharing my knowledge and making everyone's future bright. All right, everyone. I want you all to put your hands together for our special guest at school. Welcome, Mayor Tiger. He sure did look fine in a suit. And as he was giving his speech to the students, he suddenly stopped and took me by surprise. There's a new movie that came out recently. If you're free on Saturday, Yes, I'd love to go out on a date with you. Thank you, my first lady.
Hi, I'm Sarah, and I was born in the beautiful town of Woodmead. I loved it there because we were surrounded by people who knew and loved us. I was five years old when we spent our last Christmas there, opening gifts with my cousins. Look, I got a jewelry box with a little ballerina. I know how much you love ballet, so mom let me get it for you. The gifts were great, but it was about having all of our family and friends around that made me love Christmas. But about a month later, my parents started acting so weirdly. Put on this wig and sunglasses. We're going on a little trip. But why do I have to wear this, Mom? We're going to play pretend. You can even choose a new name for yourself. Ballet shoes. I want to be called ballet shoes. And ever since then, we've never been back to Woodmead. Not even to see family. I was homeschooled, and I wasn't allowed to speak to anyone. When I was around 10, I got so sick and tired of her life, I ran out the gates and into the forest. Sarah! Sarah! I'll only come out when you tell me that we can go back to our old home. But this is our new life, honey. I thought you'd be used to it by now. How can anyone get used to living like an alien? Every time we go out, we all wear wigs and change our names. I'm tired of it. Take me back to see my cousins and friends. Mom eventually found me behind the tree and carried me back home. I was so angry at my parents, but they never heard me out. And then one day, when I was 14, they were watching the news and the reporter was talking about fugitives. Are we fugitives? Is that why we can't talk to anyone? No, honey, we are actually. Dad was about to tell me what the real deal was, but Mom stopped him to tell me the greatest news, and I forgot about the fugitive thing. I've got good news for you. You can start going to real school. But on one condition, you can't make friends or speak to anyone. I was so excited to finally get out of the house, so I didn't worry much about the terms and conditions. On my first day of school, I was so excited, but it soon wore off. As I walked down the school corridor, I noticed everyone staring at me. They whispered as I walked by, but I knew I couldn't speak, so I just rushed to my class. When I got into the class, the teacher smiled at me strangely and introduced me to the class. Class, this is Sarah. Do you remember me telling you about her? The teacher suddenly started speaking to me like she had a speech problem. Welcome to class, Sarah. I thought it would be different at school, but I still felt like an alien. Everyone acted so strange. When I got home, Mom and I started dinner, then Dad came home. How are my favorite girls? You're only girls. Dinner's ready. Let's eat. Then it's game night and Dad gets to choose. How was school today, Pumpkin? Talk to anyone? No, Dad. I didn't talk to anyone. What's the matter, sweetie? Today at school, all the kids were staring and whispering, you know, as if something was wrong with me. And then when I got to class, the teacher spoke to me so slowly. You were new there, sweetie. Everything will seem strange. That doesn't make any sense. At least you're around other kids, right? I guess. I couldn't stop thinking about how strange everyone acted. After dinner, I didn't feel like playing any games, so I went straight to bed. Months went by, and I was still the quiet weirdo at school with no friends. Soon, everyone started talking about Christmas gifts. Hey, who do you have to get a gift for? I'm not telling. It would ruin the whole surprise. All right, everyone. Here are the science results. This was my favorite subject. And whenever I got an A-plus on my tests, kids would be jealous and pick on my muteness. I wonder how the mute girl gets 100% all the time. Maybe she's the teacher's favorite because she's so quiet. After they were done talking, I walked past their table and let out a smelly soft gas right next to the tables. Ew, I think I'm going to vomit. What's that disgusting smell? I smiled and walked out of the class, feeling good about my sweet revenge. Later that night, while I sat reading, mom and dad watched the news again. And then suddenly, I heard that fugitive word again. Mom, dad, I know I've asked before, but are we fugitives? Well, sweetie, it's like this. No, sweetie, we're not. Fugitives are usually on the run because they've done something bad. Have we done something bad? No, sweetie. Can we talk about something happier, please? The kids at school are going to exchange gifts for Christmas. Oh, that reminds me. We need to plan for our annual party. We're the only ones that are going to be there, Dad. Some party that will be. My parents didn't understand. I wished so badly to have a friend my age, just to talk to. A week later, I think my wish came true, because a new girl joined our class, and she kept glaring at me, and I just kept smiling back. Class, this is Alia. She is new here. I want you all to be nice. Alia sat down and didn't seem to mind that I didn't speak. 
Hello. I just smiled and waved back. She smiled back and I had such an urge to open my mouth and say, Can we be friends, please? And then during recess, while I sat all by myself as usual, Alia came and sat with me. Hi again. Do you mind if I sit here? I smiled and nodded again. She must have thought I was a crazy person. All this smiling and nodding. <laughs> But she really didn't mind, since she kept coming back. After a few weeks of listening to Alia, I could tell why she didn't have any other friends. She was a motor mouth. Hey Sarah, how was your weekend? My mom took me to get a dress for the Winter Wonderland dance, and then we went to this beautiful museum. It was so much fun. I even got this really cool glow stick and a chain and a bracelet and this awesome nightlight. It makes all the items at the museum show on the walls at night and... I smiled and waited for the rest of Alia's story, but then she said something that I couldn't keep quiet about. Oh, how I wish you didn't have that speech disorder. I so want to know how your weekend went. Just imagine if... I shouted out before Alia could complete her sentence. Speech disorder? Who told you I have a speech disorder? The principal. Your parents told him just so the other kids wouldn't pick on you. I was so mad I could have screamed. Again! But the others were coming in. The teacher continued with the lesson, but I wasn't paying attention. I obeyed my parents. And now I find out they lied about why I didn't speak. It was time for me to return the favor. Okay, class. Today is book reading day. Does anyone want to go first? Thank you, Sarah. You can leave your book on my desk. But instead, I started reading my book fluently. The teacher in the class stared at me in amazement, and then one of the girls stood up and shouted, <gasps> She can speak! It's a miracle! I couldn't contain myself and <laughs> burst into a fit of giggles. The rest of the class followed along. During recess, all the kids surrounded me like I was a celebrity, wanting to hear me speak. Alia eventually came to my rescue. Okay, guys, give Sarah a break. She just found her voice. We don't want her to lose it again. Yeah, guys, Ollie is right. She never gets tired of talking. So you're welcome to stay and listen to her. Be warned, though, she doesn't have a stop button or even a pause. We all laughed. It felt amazing to be part of the class and not left out anymore. And all the kids were so accepting. I'm glad I caught you before you left. Oh, I'm sorry. I hope it's not about the joke I made during recess. It was honestly just a joke. I love that you are so talkative. <laughs> and no, I wasn't offended. I wanted to know if you have a partner for the Christmas gift giving day. I almost forgot about that. No, I don't. Great, then we can get gifts for each other. Things were really looking great for me at school. Until I got home, Dad was sitting on the couch, looking very serious. Dad, are you alright? Mom didn't speak to me at all on the way home. Is everything okay? The principal of your school called us this morning. My heart sank. I knew what was coming. He said that everyone was calling it a miracle that you are speaking. Well, uh... How long were you going to keep this from us? And don't stutter. You're a walking miracle to your friends. Yes, Mom. Friends. For the first time in a long time, I felt accepted and part of the group. I won't apologize for that. You watch your tone, young lady. We are still your parents. I have to wonder, what is that supposed to mean? You lied to the principal that I couldn't speak because of a speech disorder. How could you do that? And what about taking me away from all the people we loved and making me dress like someone else? Sometimes I don't even know who I am or where I belong. And who wants their child to be a mute at school and not have any friends? Everything we do is to keep you safe. Safe from what? A bunch of teenagers? Enough. Go to your room. Ugh, Mom and Dad were being so unfair, and I felt like an animal stuck in a cage. The next morning, I went to the kitchen, and Mom and Dad were there. I ignored them, but they looked so sad. We're sorry about last night, sweetie. We understand that we have been hard on you. And to make it up to you, we're going to let you be a part of the Christmas gift exchange. We just have to get a gift from the mall. Whoa! Alia was right! I did find my voice! Mom and Dad actually heard me out last night. When we got to the mall, I was so excited to look for a gift for Alia. Okay, remember, no wandering off, all right? Yes, Mom, I know. Mom and Dad were being so cool. We got the gift and we had lunch, then played games at the arcade. I was so exhausted by the time I got to the car that I fell fast asleep. Wake up, sleepy. We're home. I felt like I slept for hours, but I couldn't have because when Mom woke me, she said we were home. The only thing was, this wasn't home. The more I looked around, the more confused I was. Mom, Dad, where are we? This is our new home. No, it's not. I want to go home. <gasps> Sarah, please. You're acting like a baby. Stop treating me like one. The moment I get close to anyone, you move across the state. What is wrong with you? 
I was so upset. I ignored dad when he tried to explain. He left with mom to move our things into his new house while I sat in the car. Then he came over to me. Sarah, are you all right? No, dad. I can't do this anymore. It may have been fun when I was little. Not anymore. Okay, it's late. We should head inside. Tomorrow we see the new school. What do you say, sweetie? I say no! Eventually I gave in and started in the new school. For this next experiment, I want you to pair up. After the teacher gave his instructions, Lincoln approached me. He was this guy that no one paid attention to since he dressed like a goth. Well, looks like that's you and me. He did the exact opposite of what the teacher said and started pouring yellow liquid into the beaker. Relax, you'll see. And this goes in next. And the next thing I knew, we were covered in green goop that exploded all over us. Oops, I guess I heard wrong. <laughs> We were sent to get cleaned up, and as we walked, Lincoln talked and talked. So, what's your story? I heard that you can't speak. Were you born without a tongue or something? It felt like deja vu, and I was so angry at my parents for spreading this lie again, so I just told Lincoln the truth. I have a tongue, so you can squash your crazy theory. I just can't make friends. Wow, you're actually good at it. Talking, I mean. You know, it might help you make friends. You think I don't know that? Before I knew it, I had told Lincoln my whole sad story. I felt good getting it off my chest, and I didn't take Lincoln for a gossip. But when I got to school the next day, I realized I was wrong about him. What's it like having fugitive parents? Excuse me? Have you always been on the run? Then I knew Lincoln gossiped. When I found him, I let him have it. How could you? I never said we were fugitives! I must have heard wrong. I felt like shaking Lincoln so he would hear straight, but then this monster of a girl came at me from nowhere. I managed to move out of her way just before she could ram me. You leave my brother alone, or else I won't miss next time. Your brother is a gossip. Jess, it's all right. I'm fine. See? Jessica didn't hear Lincoln. She took a swing at me, but couldn't land it because someone grabbed her arm. The principal was the one that grabbed Jessica's arm. It turns out this wasn't the first time she got into trouble trying to defend Lincoln. I just got a final warning and two weeks suspension because of you! Well, at least you get to come back. I didn't care who Jessica blamed. I was just so mad at Lincoln. He turned out to be such a jerk! When I went into the office, the principal left and my mom and dad were there. Immediately, my defenses went up. Are you alright? Yeah, mom, I'm alright. We shouldn't have pressured you. We only thought about keeping you safe, and not how this might make you feel. I didn't expect this. I was so used to fighting mom and dad by now, I didn't know what to say. So I cried. I'm so sorry. I should have listened. Now look what's happened because I couldn't keep quiet. It's all right, sweetie. I should have told you from the start. We're in a witness protection program. Your dad and I testified against some hardened criminals, and we couldn't risk them finding you. Oh, Mom, I'm so sorry I never trusted you. I think it's time we go home. When we got home, I saw that Mom and Dad had packed. This was something I should have expected. Okay, we're all set. Ready, sweetie? Yes, Dad. Dad loaded the car, and we set off. I wondered about the next town. You should get comfy, sweetie. We're in for a long drive. Where are we headed? Home, sweetie. Home. I soon fell asleep. I woke up when I felt the car stop. We were parked outside our old house in Woodmead. I didn't understand. I thought we weren't safe here. Mom. Dad. What are we doing here? I told you we were going home. Those bad people I told you about, they have finally been sent to prison. It was Christmas, and we were all together, just like when I was little. But I had to do something very important. Mom, Dad, can we go for one last trip? Okay, but it's Christmas. I know, but I promised someone that I would buy them a gift. My parents agreed, and I couldn't wait to get to our destination. When we finally arrived, I knocked on the snowflake decorated door, and I was so happy to see Alia's face again. Sarah? What are you doing here? I thought I would never see you again. I came to give you your present. Alia immediately hugged me, almost crying. Thank you for remembering. This means a lot. I kept your present as well. This is what I loved most about Christmas. Not the gifts, but being able to make someone smile. Hi there, I'm Bree from Texas. Growing up next to the perfect sister, who always liked to be the center of attention, was exhausting. A perfect 100! We're so proud of you, Annie. Bree, 
You should be more like your sister. Annie was obviously my parents' favorite, and they just couldn't help rubbing it in my face. My sister was the polar opposite of me. She was smart, <laughs> fashionable, pretty, and super mean. Ew! Did a bird make its nest in your hair? While I was reckless, carefree, and loved animals, I could spend hours playing with them and even brought some home sometimes. But mom and dad weren't great fans of my friends. At school, everyone found it hard to believe that I was Annie's sister because she was so perfect and I was, well, weird. Once, in sixth grade, I had forgotten my pet rat in my backpack and it caused so much chaos in my class. Oh my god! A rat came out of her bag! Sebastian, come here right now! Take that thing out of my class! Annie was so angry about the incident that she dragged me to a corner after class and yelled at me. You silly oaf! It's fine if you want to embarrass yourself, but do that outside. School is my territory, and everyone knows you're my sister. Oh, forgive me, your majesty. Here, take my pet rat as a peace offering. <laughs> I snatched my arm from her, and she walked away. Ugh, why did she always have to be so uptight? Pretty soon, Annie and I graduated high school. Annie with perfect straight A's, and me with... Well, you don't want to know. To celebrate Annie's grades, my parents made a big announcement a month before Christmas. We'll be taking a vacation trip to an island in Guatemala. What? I don't want to go. We can't leave you behind to play with your silly animals. You're coming with us, Bree. Yeah, Bree. Not everyone is a creep like you. You know what an island is full of, right? Insects and creepy crawlies. <laughs> we traveled to Guatemala and... Vacation on the island wasn't as bad as I thought. On the day we arrived, we all dressed up in our swimsuits to explore the sea. But when I saw Annie, I nearly tripped in shock. She looked so weird in her fur bikini, and I had to hold myself back from bursting into laughter. What's that? It's a fur bikini, made popular by Kim Kardashian herself. Get with the times, dummy. It makes you look like a furry sea slug. You know the fish might think you're one, right? Annie's face turned red like a tomato about to burst. I snickered and pranced out of the lodge before she could say anything. An hour later, we were chilling by the shore. I was reading some silly sports magazine I had found in the lodge while Annie showed off her pathetic swimming skills to my parents. Just looking at them fawning over her made me want to puke. I can do the backstroke too! Suddenly, she shrieked and jumped out of the water, her entire body covered in lobsters. My parents scrambled after her while I stayed in my seat, dying of laughter. She looked ridiculous. I warned you about the fur. Seeing me laugh made mom furious. Your sister's dying and you're laughing, Brie? <laughs> it's just lobsters. She'll be fine. God, they were so dramatic. That's it. Go to your room. Whatever. I grabbed my things and headed back to the lodge. I stayed there for a while, but I got bored. So I threw on some safari clothes and went exploring. While exploring the island, suddenly I came across a rabbit with its legs stuck in between some branches. I was about to help it when I felt something poke me in the back. Not one step further, intruder! You're not allowed to harm the animals of this island! It was a girl, and she sounded like she was going to attack me. The rabbit is stuck. I finally saw her face and was stunned by how pretty she was. Like your kind is capable of being nice. Of course I am. Prove it! I walked up to the rabbit and freed it, then knelt beside it and stroked its back. You're different from the other visitors we've had. Her name was Grenda, and she sounded so surprised I had helped the rabbit. We started talking. Where are you from? Texas. Where's that? I realized Grenda had no idea what the outside world was like. She'd never been outside the forest before. So you don't even know what a telescope is? How does it work? I taught her how to use the telescope. Why are your eyes so big? They're not. The telescope just makes everything bigger. What else do you see? I can see a tree. Oh, and a bird. And a snake. Wow, it's like magic. By the time we were done, it was almost dark, so I had to dash back to the lodge. But we promised to meet at the same spot the next day. After that strange encounter, Grenda and I started to hang out regularly. She didn't care one bit about my strange bond with animals, and we quickly became friends. Come, I want to show you something. Grenda grabbed my arm and dragged me to a secluded part of the island, where a magnificent, gigantic bird stood right in its middle. Wow, it's our goddess Momo, reincarnated as a bird. 
I circled the bird, admiring its beautiful white feathers. It was a dodo bird, which had not been seen in centuries. No one outside my tribe is allowed into this place, but I showed it to you because I trust you, Bree. I'd never betray your trust, Grenda. You know, it's so beautiful, just like you. Grenda's stare made me feel butterflies in my tummy. Her face started to come close. OMG! Was she about to kiss me? But before anything could happen, we heard some noises in the bushes and panicked. Who's there? There was no response. Grenda and I looked around but couldn't find anyone. We still couldn't shake the feeling that someone was there. I shouldn't have done this. You're not supposed to be here. Let's leave. We parted ways. I went back to the cabin while she returned to her home. The next day, I was getting ready to explore the other parts of the island when I noticed Grenda approaching me angrily from a distance. Tears were streaming down her cheeks. Grenda! I ran up to her, but she shoved me so hard I was surprised she wasn't secretly an MMA fighter hiding in a young girl's body. You thief! I should have known better than to trust you! What are you talking about? You stole our sacred bird! What? Grenda, no! I'd never do that! I tried to calm her, but she just ran off in a storm. I don't ever want to see you again! I chased after her, but holy macaroni, she was fast! After a while, I stopped to catch my breath and think. Grenda was my only friend. I couldn't lose her. I was going to prove to her. I had nothing to do with her missing sacred bird. I began to search all over the island for the bird. But by evening, I couldn't find any trace of it. I returned to the cabin, disappointed. But before I could open the door, I heard Annie's voice from her room. Ugh! Why are you so heavy? What was she up to this time? I went to check and was surprised to find the little she-devil had the dodo bird in her room! Look! You large, lazy monster! I thought you were supposed to be smart, because this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Ugh, stop whining and help me get this bird under control! Do you have any idea how much trouble you've landed us in? You stole their goddess! Goddess? Pfft, that's dumb. This is a dodo bird, and I can't wait to show it to mom and dad. They'll be so proud when they found out I discovered an extinct bird! What? It's not yours. It's mine if I say so. Annie and I began to fight for the bird. <sighs> Let go! In the midst of our struggle, suddenly some people from Grenda's tribe emerged from the nearby bushes and surrounded us with sharp weapons. In the middle were Dad and Mom, bound in chains, looking so confused. Honey, what is that thing? That's not a thing. That's Momo, our goddess, and you will respect her. Before I could say anything, Annie and I were put in chains and we were all dragged away like common criminals. They moved us to a side of the island I'd never explored before. It was full of huts and more people like Grenda. We were presented before a man I assumed was the king. This must all be a mistake. Silence. You. My guards tell me you were one of those seen with the goddess. Speak. I didn't waste time spilling everything. My sister, Annie, stole your bird, and I was only trying to retrieve it. But he didn't believe me. I know better than to trust your kind. My parents, on the other hand, were really mad at Annie. I can't believe your greed landed us here, Annie. How could you be so foolish? Annie couldn't even look at them. Take them to the lava pit. We were dragged into a cave where there was a pit of hot, steaming lava. Its heat made me feel like a raw piece of beef about to be turned into steak. One of the men began poking me with a stick, leading me to the edge of the lava pit. Jump! Fear gripped my legs tightly, and just when I thought there was no hope, Grenda appeared in front of me, shielding me from the man. I won't let you touch her or her family. You pick a bunch of intruders over your own tribe. It's either them or us. Grenda still wouldn't budge, and that made the king angry. Since you've chosen a side, you're all banished from this island. Grenda accepted her fate. As soon as the islanders left, she freed us all from our chains and threw her arms around me. I'm really sorry for not believing you, Bray. It wasn't your fault. I'm sorry too. Saving us cost you your home. Not really. I want to see Texas and telescopes and eat hamburgers. Hamburgers, you mean? We returned to our cabin and prepared to leave. How can we ever thank you? She can come to live with us, since she was banished too. Of course. They sounded quite gracious. Maybe I could chip in one more. And you can also start treating me better. It's not fair how you always give Annie all the attention. 
Oh, honey, we don't mean to, but maybe we have been a little negligent. We promise we'll be better. Then they turn to Annie. As soon as we get home, you're grounded. That's not fair! Serves you right. We left the island the next day, and during our flight home, Grenda couldn't stop wowing and touching everything in the plane. Wow, it moves! Sorry. <laughs> Are those hamburgers? I want them all! When we got home, I was excited to show her around town. With my guidance, she settled well into the modern world within a few days. One day, we were taking a stroll through the park when I saw a poster. Texas presents to you the annual Christmas talent show. You should participate. I think you do brilliantly. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not as smart as Annie. Brenda grabbed my chin and looked deep into my eyes. She had the prettiest blue eyes I'd ever seen. They were hypnotic. Enough about Annie. You're an amazing person, and you have an amazing bond with animals. I followed her advice and entered the competition. When I told my parents about it, they were super supportive. We'd love to watch you perform. Ever since our vacation on the island, my parents had started to treat me much better. But in the process, they were pushing Annie to the side. That's not fair! I have my science project that day too! You're still grounded, Annie. No science project for you! Mom, you know it means a lot to me. Not one more word. I looked at Annie, and she seemed really sad. For the first time, I felt sorry for her. I knew that project was a super big deal to her. But I had to focus on my talent show. I started practicing my routines every day with Sebastian, my pet rat. I would show Grenda my performances, and she always laughed and complimented me. You're amazing. Whenever I was near her, my skin felt like it was tingling. I had to admit, I was in love. The day of the talent show finally arrived, and I was so nervous. You can do this, honey. Here, drink some water. It'll help. Having the people I cared about most by my side gave me all the motivation I needed. And when my name was called, I ran to the stage and began my performance with confidence. But something happened. I started to burp really loudly. I had to stop my performance and apologize to the audience. I'm so sorry. I was so embarrassed, I ran off the stage. Dad, Mom, and Grenda rushed towards me. Oh my god, what happened? Someone sabotaged my performance. On cue, something fell out of Grenda's bag. It was the bottle of water from earlier, but Belch Serum was written on the label instead. <gasps> Did you do this? What? No. I didn't even want to listen to her. Of all people, Grenda was the last person I expected to do something like this. We invite you to our home, and you repay us by ruining our daughter's performance? There's no way you're staying with us anymore. Mom and Dad walked me out, leaving Grenda behind all alone. I was heartbroken. The following day was Christmas, and we were carrying out our annual family tradition of gift giving. Annie was sitting on the couch by herself, so I approached her warily. I know we've had our differences, but you deserve to show up at that science project, and I'm sorry for ruining that for you. I talked to mom and dad, and you're no longer grounded. Annie's eyes welled up with emotion, and to my surprise, she suddenly hugged me. Thank you, Bree. I smiled and hugged her back. Then she started to cry a whole waterfall of tears. Oh, Bree, I'm so sorry about everything. I don't understand. I was the one who ruined your performance yesterday and framed Grenda. I was so jealous mom and dad were showing you lots of attention. I couldn't believe my ears. I owed Grenda an apology. In the spirit of Christmas, I forgave Annie. It's okay. Let's be better sisters to each other from now on, okay? I promise. I went to find Grenda in her room. She was packing her stuff ready to leave, but I quickly stopped her. Grenda, I'm so sorry. I just found out Annie had framed you. I should have believed you. I should have been a better friend. Oh, come here. Grenda hugged me. I did the same thing with the dodo bird. Now we're even. I wish I had gotten you a present. You don't have to. You're my biggest gift this Christmas. You've always been a gift to me since the first day I met you. Suddenly, Grenda pulled me to her and kissed me. This was the best Christmas ever. I came from a pretty decent family. Dad was the stay-at-home parent, while Mom worked as an accountant at the local bank. I had a sister, Mia, who was just a year older than me, and I loved playing with her. All clear, Madam President. You can now make your vows. Thank you, Miss Mia. I pledge to be the best president this school has ever had. Thank you for voting for me. 
My childhood dream was to become the school's president in high school, and Mia always supported me. But all of that changed when Mia had to repeat first grade because she wasn't school smart, and Mom wasn't too happy about that. One time, in fourth grade, after showing my grades to Mom, Mom and Dad showered me with praises. But when Mom saw Mia's report card, her smile vanished. I'm sure you're proud of me. You're happy you had C's. That's pathetic, Mia. But I worked so hard, Mom. I even cheated on some of my tests so I could score better. <gasps> You're a disgrace, Mia. Why can't you be like your little sister Zoe? I give both of you the same amount of food. So why aren't you smart? Mom wouldn't stop talking, and it made Mia cry. I tried to console Mia, but she just pushed my hands off her body and ran off. Later that evening, I went to Mia's room with some toys Mom had just bought for me. Hi, Mia. Would you like to play with some of my Barbie dolls? But instead of replying, Mia shot me the deadliest look. Okay, we can play Miss President or anything you want. How about we play? Don't talk to me ever again, huh? How about that? Just like that, Mia pushed me out of her room, and things were never the same between us again. Hey guys, my name's Zoe, and this is my story. As time passed, I got used to the new Mia and totally ignored her mean behaviors. One day in fourth grade, I was awarded three different trophies for being the best student at school, and Mom was so proud of me. After my award, I couldn't wait to get home to tell Dad all about it. But just as we stepped inside, we walked in on Dad holding hands with our family maid. I was too shocked to speak, and before Dad could say anything, Mom blurted out angrily, "You ungrateful creature! Get out of my house this minute!" I watched with teary eyes as our perfect little family crumbled right before me. Mia, go get your things too. Wait, what? Not Mia too? Although Mia was a pain in my butt, I still loved her. I tried to beg Mia to stay, but she just couldn't get out fast enough. Finally, please don't go, Mia. Mom, please tell Mia to stay. But Mom, on the other hand, couldn't wait to get Mia off her back, so she did nothing, and it got me super angry. I ran to my room and cried heavily because I knew it was the last time I'd see Mia. Zoe, please open up. They already lost Mia and your father. I can't lose you too. But I was still mad at mom because she let Mia go without even putting up a fight. After school the next day, I bought an ice cream and raced over to the skating rink where Mia loved to practice, waiting for her to show up so we could eat together. Except she didn't show up. When I got back home, I saw mom hanging up a call in tears, and my anger towards her immediately disappeared. Mom, what's the problem? I just cut off the phone with my bank. They said Dad wiped all the money in my account. All my savings are gone, Zoe. <laughs> Seeing mom cry made me emotional, so I forgave her and hugged her tightly. Everything will be fine, mom. Mom and I had to come up with a plan to earn back everything that Dad took. So we started baking and put up a stand for customers to come by. And in no time, we were back on our feet. Things were looking really good for us at home and for me at school. One day, while I was reading in the library, I was suddenly called to the principal's office through the intercom, and everyone looked at me. When I got there, I met the principal smiling widely at me. Congratulations, Zoe. Um, thank you. I just got off a call with some lawmakers of this school, and I'm glad to announce you've been chosen to be the school's president for this year. <laughs> What? That's so random. You're the best student in this school, so you deserve this. I was too shocked to come up with words to say. My childhood dream was finally a reality. I only wished Mia was still with me to celebrate the good news. Several months later, I was at the mall one day restocking items for Mom's business. Then I noticed a girl trying to steal from an old woman. So I coughed out loud to stop her operations. Ahem. <clears throat> When I moved closer, I was shocked to see the blonde girl was Mia. She looked thinner than a Victoria's Secret model and had dyed her hair blonde. When Mia recognized me, she tried running off, but I held her back. Mia? <laughs> oh, Zoe, what are you doing here? Um, shopping for mom. What are you doing here? Why were you about to steal from that old woman? That's none of your business, Miss Goody Goody. Typical Mia. I was about to tell her how much I'd missed her when an angry-looking boy appeared from nowhere. Um, hey, babe. I looked at them shocked when my little sister called the shady guy, babe. Um, hey, babe. You sound so dumb. I gave you only one job: steal the purse and leave. Instead, you're out here making friends with 
whoever this person is. Please forgive me, Kareem. This is my little sister, Zoe. She stays with my mom, and I haven't seen her in a long while. I could tell Mia was intimidated by Kareem, and this weird vibe he gave off made me dislike him instantly. Zoe, meet my boyfriend, Kareem. I gave him my not please look, and then Mia immediately took his hand to walk away. Um, okay, bye now. Mia, wait. I pulled her aside and gave her my phone to always communicate. Here, take this. Call me on mom's number. Promise me you'll call? Yeah, um, I, I have to go now. As we hugged tightly, I heard Kareem's annoying voice. Time up, Mia. We need to bounce. I watched as Mia ran off into thin air with Kareem, and all I could do was hope she'd call me. When I got home, I told Mom I saw Mia at the mall, and for the first time in a long while, Mom's face brightened with a smile. Did you talk to her? Did she tell you where they live now? I don't know where they live, but I gave her my phone to always communicate. Mom just flashed a weird grin and left. Later that night, I talked to Mia through Mom's phone, and while she didn't seem as excited as I was, I was happy that things might just work out for us again. But the next morning, I woke up to see Mia staring at me with eyes red like hot lava. Mia? How? Wait, am I still dreaming? Oh, please! Stop pretending like you don't know what you've done. You gave me your phone yesterday so you could easily track Dad and I down. Well, congrats, genius. Mom came in early this morning with the cops, and they took Dad away. And now, I'm stuck here with both of you. I didn't know Mom was gonna do that, I swear. Also, Dad deserved what came his way, because he stole all the money in Mom's account, and that's unfair. I wish I never saw you yesterday. You ruined my life every single time. Ah! Just like that, Mia stormed out angrily. In the coming days, I noticed Mia changed completely and now blamed me for anything awful that happened to her. But things moved from worse to crazy when mom enrolled Mia into my school. For starters, when Mia heard I was now the school's president, she joined forces with some mean girls to disturb the school's peace just to get back at me. One day, a junior reported that Mia tried to stick bubblegum on her desk for no reason. I summoned Mia to my office, and as usual, she blamed me for everything. Well, I wouldn't be in your life if you didn't ruin mine in the first place. If you don't stop being mean, I'll be forced to use my office on you. Oh, Miss President, I'm so scared of you. Do whatever you want. I don't care. I tried bringing out the good in Mia, but it was as if she'd exchanged her heart for a big rock. I had a few months left to spend in high school, and I was preparing for my exams, when suddenly I heard people screaming outside the house. I rushed to where the noise was coming from, only to see Mia arguing with a customer in front of our lemonade stand. Mia, what happened? This psycho here spat into my lemonade because I told her I wanted more. Mia, why would you do that? Because mom took dad away from me, and now I want to take mom's business away from her. I was so tired of keeping up with Mia's attitude that I blurted out angrily. I love Dad the same way you did, and it breaks my heart to learn he's gone. But Dad isn't the good guy here. Dad stole from us for whatever reason. You started picking pockets because Dad never influenced you right. Mom may be hard on you, but at least she doesn't make you do bad things to survive. You're such a jerk, Mia! And with that, I stormed out of there, boiling with rage. When Mom returned from work that evening, I told her all Mia had done, and Mom lost her temper. I've done everything I could for you! I clothe you, feed you, I even saved you from that evil man that's supposed to be your father! But this is how you pay me? With more problems? Oh, please, Mom! It's not like I asked to be in your life again! You came to pick me up after you called the cops on Dad! Remember? You know what? I'm done living with both of you! I'm going to stay with the love of my life! Don't look for me! That night, Mia packed everything she had and left the house. I was too angry to beg her to stay, because she'd done enough damage in just a few months she stayed with us. When I got to school the next day, I noticed the school's trophy cabinet was as empty as space. I thought the cleaners had taken all the trophies out for cleaning, but when I got to my office, I met the principal, already waiting for me at my desk, fuming like a car exhaust pipe. My heart beat a hundred times in a second as he started speaking. I noticed all the golden trophies awarded to this school have gone missing, and you are the only one with the key to the trophy cabinet. But I don't believe you're the thief. I think someone else stole the trophies, which is why I would respectfully take this from you and relieve you of your duties as this school's president. I'm sorry, Zo. After speaking, the principal ripped the president tag off me. I felt my heart break into a million pieces like a fragile egg. 
Please, pack up your stuff and submit the key at this office by the end of today. With a heavy heart, I did as the principal had instructed. Unfortunately, news that I was no longer the school's president spread like wildfire, and everyone pitied me and started treating me different. Aw, Zoe, I'm so sorry things turned out this way for you. Well, I made this for you. I hope you like it. Uh, thank you, but I'm good. Mom didn't act any different from my schoolmates either. She lavished me with gifts, hoping they'd make me feel better. In less than three weeks, I got over my loss and studied hard for my final exams. As expected, I aced all my papers and was the valedictorian for my class. A day before my graduation, I was trying to come up with the best speech when Mom walked into my room. I know you're busy, but I wanted to give you this one gift that I've been keeping for almost 17 years now. My eyes brightened as mom showed me two tiny wrapped boxes, and all I could do was wonder what was inside those boxes. It's a gift from your dad. I mean, your real dad. Suddenly, my heartbeat slowed and I couldn't wrap my head around what mom meant by real dad. This was supposed to be for you, and this for Mia. I was instructed to give the box to you a day before your graduation. Mom handed over the dusty, tiny box to me, and when I opened it, I saw a beautiful locket necklace with a little baby and a man's picture in it. Who are these people? That's your real dad. We lost him when you were just two months old. So, who is the man that stole from us? Oh, I met him a while after we lost your dad. I was scared of raising two girls alone, so I moved on and remarried. He was a good guy. I really didn't think he would betray me. Why didn't you tell me about this? And you just left Mia to go with him, even though he was not her real father? You were both little girls, and you knew nothing. I hid all your real dad photos because I thought I was protecting you from the pains of losing someone. And you're right, I was so stupid to have let go like that. I was just so angry at that time. I'm so sorry. It's fine, Mom. We just need to find Mia and tell her the truth. After that, I wore my necklace and sat up all night crafting the perfect speech. When it was time for me to deliver, I was called on stage. But just then, something unexpected happened. I saw Mia approaching me from the backstage and I froze. I was shocked, happy and confused all at the same time. I expected her to hug me and explain all that had happened to her. But instead, she reached out for the microphone and started speaking. Um, I just want to say something. I'm sorry, Zoe. I was the one that took your keys and I helped Kareem steal all the trophies from the school. But now, Kareem dumped me and sent me packing. And not a single day has passed without me hating myself and feeling guilty for ruining your life. Please forgive me, little sis. I had so many questions to ask Mia, but I bottled them up and helped her to her feet, and just then, the school's principal joined us on stage. With Mia's help, we've been able to retrieve all the stolen items and arrest those involved. But because of Mia's confession, we've decided to let her off with a fine. After the principal spoke, I gave my speech with Mia by my side. Then, I took Mia to where Mom was seated, and there was an awkward silence until Mia spoke. Mom, I'm so... Shh. I wasn't the best mom to you, and I'm sorry about everything, Mia. I missed you so much. I miss you too. Mom opened her arms wider, and I joined in the warm hug. Hi, my name's Pamela, and ever since I was a little girl, basketball has been my thing. Well, that's because Dad was a famous basketball player a long time ago, and now he's a coach. When you score, you stand with one leg in front, one in back. Hold the ball like this, and then you score. Like this? Well done, baby girl. One day you're going to be a pro, just like me. Dad loved winning, and because of him, I grew up and became the best in my team, until I started having these strange dreams. I've been waking up from my sleep for six months now, and I haven't told anyone. My gut told me that was not going to last. Come to us. <gasps> oh! <sighs> These dreams again. Wild, right? I'm from Kenya, born and raised here. I'm just your typical high school girl, determined and confident. These dreams are something else. Please make sure you subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Sometimes people think I have a big ego, but I just like making my dad super proud. Not everybody was happy about that, especially Sandra, a pretty girl in my team. Hey, what's wrong with you? Are you crazy? Why didn't you pass the ball? 
I called out like a million times. You always want to take the win. Chill out, girl. We still won the game. When she was about to push me again, the rest of our team lifted me up in the air, and Sandra just sulked like a rotten apple. After the game, I went straight to the shower room, but when I was done, all my clothes were cut into pieces, and I had no choice but to wrap myself up with the shower curtain. This girl had no shame. She looked at me with her cunning eyes, and I was so mad. What's the matter, Pamela? You've run out of clothes. This is not funny, Sandra. You can be expelled for what you did. I'll just say it wasn't me. I had enough of her. So I pinned her down and then, Bradley, my boyfriend, appeared and pulled me off her. Pamela, what are you doing? This she-devil cut all my clothes! She's lying. I think your girlfriend has lost her marbles. Bradley pulled me away and started lecturing me as if I was his child. We have a reputation to keep. You can't run around acting like a crazy person. Whatever, Bradley. Bradley and I ended up dating because our fathers were good friends. I liked him sometimes, but most of the time he was so annoying, and I couldn't really be myself around him. Once he drove me home after school, I felt like singing to the music, and he just turned it off. Hey, that's my favorite song. You're a basketball player, not a singer, Pamela. Whatever. You can't be angry about what I said. We need to know our priorities, and singing is not one of them. I sing for fun. See you at the family dinner, I guess. Bradley was a bit of a control freak. Like I said, I couldn't be myself around him. Later that evening, my family went to Bradley's house for a family dinner we normally have every Friday. And this time, my dad had an announcement to make. Everyone, can I have your attention? I just want to say how proud I am of my one and only daughter, Pamela. She just got accepted to study at the most prestigious university in the USA. And with some extra motivation, she will be joining the biggest basketball club. I was a bit upset that Dad opened up my letter before me, but it was also an exciting moment. Wow, this is great news. And I'll be there, right by your side. <laughs> my dad had some good connections in the USA for me to kick off my career in basketball, so all eyes were on me to do exceedingly well. That night, we were all great until suddenly I felt like a hammer was banging on my head. Bradley brought me a tall glass of water. Here, drink this. It helps with my headaches all the time. Water? Yep, water. It cures the pain like magic. If the first glass doesn't work, try three more. You'll be fit as a horse. Just hearing him talk made my headache worse. So my mom, who was the sweetest woman alive, kindly took me home. After I got home, I crashed on my bed. I must have dozed off because hours later, I could hear my mom's voice calling me from far away. Pamela? Pamela, wake up! Eventually, when I woke up, I was sweating and shaking. No idea what was happening or even where I was. Pamela, I'm worried about you. I keep having these dreams about the ocean and some people calling me into the water. Okay, and how's your head? I feel okay, except for my neck. And sometimes I get these really bad stomach cramps. Oh, that doesn't sound good. We are going to the doctor first thing in the morning. The next day, Mom took me to the doctor. I could tell something was wrong by the way he kept looking at the charts. Imagine my surprise then. Everything seems to be fine with her. Healthy young woman. I can give you something for the headaches. How can you not find anything wrong? I've been in pain for over a week. I have these nightmares. I need you to fix this. It just didn't make sense. How could he find nothing wrong? I got so mad that I just stormed off. When I got home from the hospital, my grandma was there. I hadn't seen her in years. Oh, you've grown so much. <laughs> yeah, Gran. It's nice to see you again. I've missed you. Your mom tells me that you have been having some headaches, stomach cramps, strange dreams. It's been a rough couple of weeks. Probably just a phase. I want you to come with me to the village. I think I know someone who could help. Someone like who? A village healer. <laughs> Gran, I don't believe in all that stuff. I think you should go with your grandmother. I could see the worry in my mom's eyes, but I didn't want to go there. And just when I was about to reject them, a soaring pain went right through my back. <gasps> Come, we need to go. Mom and Gran got me to the village as quickly as they could. Normally, I would have been thrilled to visit, not so much today. Honestly, I couldn't believe what was happening to me. I was scared, but didn't want to show it. My mouth was dry. 
pain was shooting through every cell in my body. I wanted to be anywhere but here, but something deep inside was telling me it was going to be okay. Mom and Grant took me into this strange hut, and when we were inside, there was a man who was seated on a straw mat. He glared at me like a zombie. Mom, Gran, are you sure about this? Yes, come sit. My heart pounded as I sat down, wondering what was going to happen next. Mmm, finally you have arrived. Were you expecting me? Jeez! Quiet. This was getting creepier by the moment. <laughs> no, I can't do this. You have the calling. I knew it. I had no idea what he was talking about. And then he tied a black string around my ankle while my mom and Gran just watched. There's not much time left. She needs to start the training before it's too late. Too late? What are you talking about? You have a calling from your ancestors. To be a healer like him, it is a great honor. What? No way, I don't want that. I'm going to the USA to be a famous basketball player. She's still so young. What do we do to make the ancestors wait a little longer? You cannot make the ancestors do anything. Mom, do you really believe in all this stuff? Yes, it's part of who we are. Make them know. Ask them. Yes. She needs to come with me to the river and ask her ancestors for time. This was a lovely experience, but I have a big game to practice for. I really wanted to go home, but Mom insisted we sleep over. I was tired and didn't even remember dozing off. The next morning, I woke up with another banging headache. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my medication. Do you still have water? This is the village. You can get water from the tap. Just when I was about to argue with the guy for his bad customer service, a tall guy with the most beautiful brown eyes touched my shoulder. He's right, you know. Everyone here drinks water from the tap. Tastes the same. Better, actually. Haha, <laughs> wow. I guess I have no choice. I've never seen you around here before. My grandmother lives here. I just came to visit. That's nice. I'm Jif. And you are. I shook his hand, feeling so many butterflies rolling in my tummy. And do you live around here? My grandmother does. I come here for my training. Wow, you also have this calling thing too? Yes. I'm guessing you're here because of that. Yeah, but I don't believe in those things. I, uh, I have to go now. The pain and cramps only get worse if you don't accept it. It's actually not such a bad thing. Zenona. So I've heard. I walked away because I still thought the whole thing was crazy. At least, that's what I kept telling myself. Aha, you two are back, finally. So how was the village? Creepy. Gran took me to some healer and he said I had some kind of calling from the dead or whatever. How crazy is that? You took her to a healer and you didn't tell me. I had to. She was in so much pain, and she has no choice. She must answer the call. <laughs> no, this is not happening. We don't believe in that stuff. You don't believe in it, but I do. Mom and Dad got into an argument, and I let them be and went off to take a bath. I couldn't wait for practice. I felt good, but when I walked into the courtroom, my mind froze when I saw Sandra hugging Bradley. I couldn't believe it. Hey, what's going on? <gasps> Come on. What are you up to, Sandra? <laughs> it's not my fault that your man is into me. My blood boiled. I looked at Bradley, but he looked away, and then I walked up to him and slapped him. You two actually make a great match. It's like two snobs in the pod. Goodbye, Bradley. Thank goodness I drove Mom's car to school. Suddenly, my life felt like a complete mess. I sat at that intersection for 10 minutes, just thinking. In one direction, home. The other, to the village. We're waiting for you, Pamela. I couldn't understand what was happening to me. It was like I was in another world. My head was spinning. I had to choose my path. 
When I got to my grandmother, she was gone. I just wanted all of this to go away. I didn't know what to do. Emma. Uh, help! I need help! My head! Come, we need to go to the healer. She needs help. Her pain is increasing. I can't help her. Because she won't accept who she is. At this point, I just wanted it all to stop. I couldn't handle the thumping sound in my head any longer, so I burst out. Okay, okay, I accept it. Just tell me what to do. Kum, we have to go to the river. I found myself in the middle of a freezing river, wondering what might eat me below the surface. I still couldn't believe all this was happening just because of some weird dreams and headaches. You need to talk to them. Like how? What do I say? Tell them what's in your heart. Ask for some time. You'll have to do this by yourself. We'll wait for you. I was a little scared to be left there alone, talking to my ancestors. So I closed my eyes and spoke from my heart. Hi, everyone that's here listening. Um, I want to be a basketball player, but you want me to be a healer. I've never really thought of myself as a healer, see? So this is pretty weird. So why me? I opened my eyes and waited for an answer, but there was just stillness. <sighs> I accept this, but I need you to give me some time to understand how all this works. And just like that, the headache was gone. So was the pain in my back. I felt so light, like I had nothing to worry about. They have heard you come. They don't say much, do they? They do, if you listen. Hey, what are you doing up so late? Don't you have practice tomorrow? Yes, I do. Dad, I've decided to put my basketball dream on hold for a while. What? No, you can't do that. Stop talking like that. I'm answering the calling, Dad. What about your future? America. This is all your mother's fault. No, Dad. Not everything is about winning. If I don't do this for me, then I'll never be complete. It's who I am, and I accept it. Why can't you? My dad was upset that night, but I knew he'd get over it, and one day he'd be thankful. My training took 12 months to complete, and soon I was able to help other young people like myself. I'm so proud of you, Pamela. I would have never done this without you. Jeff and I got really close while I was training, and I kind of fell in love with him. To our daughter. <coughs> don't be afraid, Dad. This is why I made my choice. So that I can help. I don't believe in all this stuff. Not yet. Dad eventually got better and we were speaking again. I was a healer. I saved my father and I was happy. And then one day, my ancestors came into my dreams again. Only this time, I was listening. One thing's for sure, my ancestors were not subtle, and they were kind of hard to ignore. I didn't need an interpreter to know what they were saying. It's weird how life turns out. I always thought I was going to be a rich and famous basketball player, but that was my dad's dream. My ancestors helped me find my own dream. They showed me the way to be a leader and a healer. And now, thanks to their guidance, I feel complete being a coach and a healer. Something tells me that my new life is going to be just fine.
Hello, my name is Victoria, but you can call me Tori. Please like and subscribe. Growing up, it was just my dad, me, and the farm animals at his ranch. I had no siblings, and my mom worked overseas. Marcelo was my only friend, and together, we got into all kinds of mischief at the ranch. A few days after he left with his dad, guilt was eating me up, and I missed him a lot. So I confessed and begged dad to give Mr. Diego his job back. It's too late. I already hired someone else. That was the last we ever spoke of Mr. Diego and Marcelo. And after that, life at the ranch became so boring. By the time I was in high school, I was pretty much a loner and only had one friend, my horse, Firefly. One day, while out exploring, Firefly skidded to a halt, sending me flying into some bushes. Ow! That's not nice, Firefly! That was fun to watch. Firefly? Since when can you talk? I must have hit my head because now Firefly was laughing. I sat up just as a boy walked towards me. Who are you? I'm the guy who spooked your horse. You should have seen the look on your face as you took a nosedive. Who was this jerk? You're trespassing. This is my dad's ranch. What are you going to do? Tell daddy. Suit yourself. Keep lurking in the bushes like a creep. I climbed back on Firefly and headed home, not knowing that my life was about to get very… interesting. The next day, I walked into class to find Dana, the head cheerleader, with her hand around another girl's throat. I can't believe you kissed my boyfriend! He's not your boyfriend, you psycho! Just then, someone blew a whistle right next to my ear! I turned, ready to shove the whistler away. And imagine my surprise when I saw it was the jerk I'd met at the ranch! What was he doing in my class? Ladies, ladies, calm down. There's enough of me to go around. I've got time for you both. The girls both lunged at him and landed blows all over him while he laughed and blew kisses at them. Fight, 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 fight! I grabbed one of the girls and pulled her away. Stop it, both of you! Can't you see he's enjoying it? Hey, nosedive, don't ruin my fun. You can join in, too. I'd rather eat glass. And my name's not Nosedive. It's Tori. I didn't ask. That's enough. Let's all take our seats. Everyone, please welcome Mock, your new classmate. But I see some of you have already met him. Mark sat next to me, much to my annoyance. Throughout the day, he kept stretching his leg and stepping on my feet. I'd kick it away, but he'd kick back harder. Seriously, what was his problem? Just then, my phone rang, and I immediately knew I was in trouble. You all know I don't allow phones ringing in my class. Tori, hand it over. You'll pick it up at the end of the week. But- If you protest, I'll take it away for two weeks. The phone's mine, sir. I'm sorry. I didn't know you had a no phone rule. Well, in that case, turn it off. Mark grinned at me, turned my phone off, then put it in his backpack. You're welcome. I eyed him suspiciously, wondering why he was being nice to me all of a sudden. After class, Mark took off with my phone. Hey! Give me back my phone! I ran after him, but by the time I reached him, he was already reading my texts. Oh, look. It's a text from Daddy. He rented out the theme park for your birthday. How sweet. I grabbed my phone and walked away to go call my dad. During the next class, I told everyone about my birthday at the park, and even though none of them were exactly my friends, they said they'd attend just so they could try out all the fun games. When the day finally came, our first stop was the Ferris wheel, but a guard blocked our entry. I'm sorry, the Ferris wheel has been booked for our special guest. But my dad booked- Look, here's the guest coming now. Please move out of the way. I turned, expecting to see some celebrity, only to see- Mark? You're the special guest? Yeah. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a Ferris wheel to enjoy. All by myself. How did he even get the guard to do this? As I watched the Ferris wheel start, I was overcome with rage. So I ran and jumped up and grabbed the cart he was sitting in. I will not let you ruin my birthday! You're crazy! And you're a jerk! Why do you hate me so much? I... I don't hate you. Then what is it? We were high up in the air now, and I was dangling from the cart, my legs swinging helplessly. Grab my hand. 
I reached out for Mark's hand, and he pulled me into the cart. Thank you. You better sit and buckle up. As soon as we got back to the ground, Mark jumped out of his seat and walked away. I still didn't know why he was acting the way he was, but I had a birthday to celebrate. All right, guys, we can all ride the wheel now. A few days later, I was walking around a jewelry store when the door opened and in walked Mark. He saw me, smirked, and walked right toward me. Fancy meeting you here. Buying matching necklaces for your girlfriends? <laughs> Are you jealous? Uh, you wish. I shoved past him, suddenly not in the mood to shop anymore. Just then, he grabbed my bag and pulled me back. Hey, Tori, wait. Have a great day. As I walked out of the store, an alarm went off. Hey, you. Stop right there. I froze in place as a security guard grabbed my bag and ordered me to follow him. Hey, give me my bag back! I didn't do anything wrong! You can explain yourself to the manager. Let's go. The guard led me to a room at the back of the store. I walked in, ready to defend myself, but all the words died in my throat when I saw who was sitting behind the manager's desk. Mark, what are you doing in here? He pointed at the sign on the desk. I don't understand. You work here? <laughs> Not really. My dad owns the store and I manage it. Just then, the guard poured the contents of my bag on the table and out fell a bracelet. I don't know how that got in there. Shoplifting is an offense, you know. I'll have to report you. He must have put it in there when he grabbed my bag. Why are you doing this to me? Mark didn't answer me. Instead, he picked up his phone and dialed 911. You have two options. You can clean the store for a month or I'll make a report. What? There's no way. He pressed the call button. Fine, I'll do it. Now hang up! Mark smirked, and I clenched my fists. As agreed, I cleaned the store every day after school. One evening, the store was closed, and it was just Mark and I inside. I was standing on a stool, busy dusting the shelves, when the lights went off. A few seconds later, there was a loud bang as the front glass window shattered. I jumped off the stool and landed in the bucket of water I'd been using to clean. As I struggled to get up, someone grabbed my arm, and I screamed again. Shh, stay down, and stop screaming. What's going on? We're being robbed. I need to trigger the alarm. Stay here. Mark crawled on all fours toward his office, but a masked man grabbed him and dragged him to his feet. Don't move! The bad guy had his back to me, so I grabbed the bucket and hit him on the head with it. His knees buckled and he went down, releasing Mark in the process. Mark, run! We bolted and jumped through the broken window, falling onto the empty street outside. <sighs> I think you saved my life. You're welcome. Police arrived and arrested the burglar. They recorded our statements, then told us to go home. Come on, I'll drive you home. No thanks. You've saved my life, now I've saved yours. We're even. Now can you leave me alone? As I walked away, Mark grabbed my hand and turned me towards him. How can you not remember me, Tori? We used to be your best friend. I continued to stare at him, still confused. It's me, Marcello. It took a while for me to recover from that bombshell. I stared at Mark... Marcello, wide-eyed. What? Surprise. Oh my god, it's really you! I went to hug him, but he pushed me away. Right, he was angry at me. Marcello, I am so sorry for what I did to you and your dad. I was so afraid and I panicked. I didn't know dad would fire your dad. Now I understand why you hate me so much. I don't hate you. I'm just mad at you. So what happens now? You torture me for the rest of my life? That was the plan, but I'm done. Truce. Mark offered his hand to shake, and I chose to hug him instead. He resisted a little, but then he hugged me back. As he drove me home, he told me about how his dad had gone from ranch to ranch until he finally landed a job. It was there that he invented a farm tool that he sold to a big company and they paid him millions for it. I was happy that life wasn't so bad for them anymore, but I was still feeling guilty. I was the reason why his dad had gotten fired. The next morning, Mark and I walked into class together and a few jaws dropped. Since when are you two friends? Since forever ago. We just had a little misunderstanding. But we kissed and made up. Dana stared daggers at me. We didn't actually kiss. Don't scratch my eyes out, please. Mark burst out laughing, and for the first time, I was happy to be at school. Mark and I hung out a lot, 
and after a few weeks, we were best friends again, and at times it felt like we could be even more. Listen up, everyone. Halloween party at my house. Theme is dress to kill. Everyone hooted and high-fived each other. When he sat down, he turned to me. Hey, will you come? <laughs> of course. I wouldn't miss it. Wanna buy costumes together tomorrow? Perfect. At the costume shop the next day, Mark and I tried every costume imaginable. I was having so much fun teasing him when he emerged from the changing room dressed as James Bond, and I almost swallowed my tongue. When it was my turn, I picked several costumes and disappeared into the ladies' changing room, only to bump into Dana. What are you doing here? Trying on costumes, duh. I looked around, but she didn't have any costumes with her. But she disappeared before I could ask. Weird. I tried on several costumes, and finally, I put on a Lady Gaga costume. When I walked out of the changing room, Mark's eyes went comically huge. Oh, wow. Hot. I checked myself in the mirror, and the blush on my face was the size of Texas. I guess we have our costumes. Can't wait. Mark held the party in an old barn on his father's property. The moment I walked in, Dana appeared out of nowhere like a ghost. Jeez, you scared me. Good, so my costume is efficient. Nice broom. Did you write it here? Ha ha, very funny. I shoved past her, trying to find Mark. Looking for your boyfriend? He's not my boyfriend. Oh please, the two of you give each other googly eyes all day. It's nauseating. Anyway, he's out in the tool shed. The shed was just outside the barn, and when I walked in, Mark wasn't there. I turned to leave, but the door was banged in my face. I grabbed the lock handle, but it didn't budge. Hello? Anyone out there? After a few minutes of banging and kicking, I grabbed an axe and swung it as hard as I could. The door went off its hinges and fell to the ground. I dropped the axe and stormed off to go find Dana. I was so sure she was the one who locked me in the shed. When I entered the barn, the lights had been dimmed and slow, romantic music was playing. I scanned the room for Dana, but froze when I spotted Mark with his arms around someone in a Lady Gaga costume exactly like mine. Mark, who is this? Tori. Yes, it's me. Who's that? It was so easy to fool you. Dana, what's happening right now? Dana locked me in the tool shed so she could pretend to be me. By now, everyone at the party was gathered around us watching the whole drama. Why would you do that? Just wanted to mess with you. That's not cool. Come on, why are you mad? You're the one who said there's enough of you to go around. Dana, I'm sorry I treated you badly, but please don't mess with Tori again. And just so I'm clear, I'm only enough for one girl, and she's right here. Butterflies filled my stomach as I looked into Mark's eyes. You look so handsome in your costume. And you look so beautiful in yours. Ugh, I need my witch costume. Mark and I laughed as we started dancing. It was the most perfect Halloween party ever. The end. I have something called social anxiety. I get so nervous when I'm around people. Recess was the worst time of day for me because kids like Marley would suddenly sneak up behind me. Ha 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 relax weirdo. What are you doing standing like a little creep behind the wall? Why don't you just get out there and make friends? Maybe because I don't want friends? And what are you hiding in your other hand? This! Ha <laughs> ha! This is the reason I don't have friends. Hi, I'm Aria, and I'm from Tennessee. I loved being home with my parents. And while we were eating dinner that night, I came up with a solution to solve my anxiety problem. Mom, since you're taking a break from work, maybe you can homeschool me. Aria, I'm taking this break so I can focus on my novel. Your therapist said the only way you can overcome your fears is by being around people. I have something better in mind that might just help. Summer school. What? That only meant more new faces. I really don't see how summer camp is going to change anything. My parents eventually convinced me that summer camp would be good for me. But I still stayed hidden away. All the new faces definitely made me more nervous. Until one day, when I really wanted a candy bar from the vending machine in the office. Hi, uh, could you change a $10 note? I want something from the vending machine. Sure, honey. Here you go. 
I waited behind another girl who wanted a soda, but looked very frustrated. I soon found out why. Hi, can I borrow some money? I don't have enough and my friends and I are so thirsty. Uh, I, uh... What is it? Can I have some or not? And with that, the girl shoved me into the machine and soda dropped down the chute. Thanks for nothing. I crouched down against the machine and cried. Just then, I saw the girl coming back. I was so afraid. But behind her was another girl who was pushing her towards me. Apologize! No! Or else... Uh, I'm sorry. And here is my money. You can get whatever you want. And that's how I met Cassidy. I shadowed Cassidy the entire summer camp. And she wasn't scared of anything. Come on, it's your turn, Arya. What if I fall? I won't let you fall. Ever. Cassidy wasn't like the other kids. We snuck out of our cabins at night to chat and watch storytime animated videos and eat s'mores. I had the time of my life. After summer camp, it was back to school for me, and I felt more confident because of who I saw. Surprise! I told my parents to transfer me to your school. Oh, wow! That's great! I was happy, but also thought it was strange. But anyway, since I didn't have any friends, it was a good thing. Until she started coming to my house. Cassidy, it's your turn. Let's see if you can maintain that winning streak. Of course she can. She's a born winner. Nah, I just practice, practice, practice and give it my best shot. Listen, she even talks like a winner. Your parents must be so proud of you. It almost seemed like my parents loved her more than me. And whenever we mentioned her parents, she looked sad or she changed the subject. Cassidy, how come you never talk about your family? Um, because they're always busy. I'll see you at school tomorrow. Back at school, Cassidy also seemed to be the shining star amongst the other kids. Once she even showed everyone that she could balance a straight line of books on her head throughout recess. This was a bet she made with some random guy. Cassidy! 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 I eventually got tired of standing around watching Cassidy, so I went to the bathroom. Which was such bad timing since I found Marley there, fixing her hair. Hey, Arya, how are you doing? I haven't seen you standing behind anything lately. <laughs> oh, you're so funny, ha ha. Cassidy and I are really busy with our science project. Cassidy, oh, her. She seems to be more likable than you. Well, I don't care about being liked. You know that. Oh, yeah. I saw how your parents get so excited when they see Cassidy every time they pick you up after school. It must be tough not being a perfect child like her. I didn't care about being liked at school, but I did care about my parents liking her more than me. So I had to make some changes. I decided maybe I didn't need Cassidy anymore. I was good without her. I got excellent grades and even did some sports and other kids at school started hanging out with me. Even Marley started liking me. Hey ladies, mind if I get a spot over there? Sure, but Marley and I are just going to take a walk outside. Aren't we, Marley? Uh, okay. But remember, we have to meet at your house this afternoon to complete our science project. Oh, uh, actually, I'm gonna take a rain check on that one. I can't do today. The next day at school, I was hanging out with Marley when Cassidy appeared. Hey Ari, can we talk about the science project, please? We're falling behind pretty bad. Oh yeah, about that? Marley and I are a better fit, so we're going to work together. You don't mind, do you? Nah, actually it's cool. I'll just finish this on my own then. See you around. And the next day, Cassidy didn't come around. And the next, and the next. After I dumped Cassidy, Marley turned out to be a terrible science project partner, since she always ditched me when I started talking about the project. Hi, darling. Are you all right? Do you need some help? No, thanks, Mom. Marley should be here soon. Marley never came, and Dad decided to step in because we needed to present the next day. Harry, darling, I haven't seen Cassidy in a while, and Mom said that Marley is supposed to be doing this project with you. I hope that you get a good grade and blow everyone's socks off. Thanks, Dad. I hope so, too. Oh, and one more thing. Good friends stick with you through good times and the bad times. Just remember that. Dad had a point about true friends, so I needed to test Marley's friendship. Hey, Marley, what happened yesterday? 
I waited all afternoon. You didn't pitch in, and I couldn't complete the project. We're going to fail. Oh, man, my dad felt so sick, and I needed to stay home and take care of him. Look, I even have a note for the teacher. I felt like a jerk. Her dad was sick, and I was trying to test her. She even had a note to ask for an extension on the deadline for our project. She had to be a true friend, but she was awfully giggly and chatty for someone with a sick dad. And when we presented the project I worked on, Marley kept repeating everything I said and just spoke louder than me. Our project is about vegetative production and cloning plants. Our project is about vegetative production and cloning plants. The teacher eventually got tired of Marley echoing after me and asked us to sit down before I could even finish. What was that about? I was just trying to help since my father is sick and I couldn't help with the project. I wanted to have some input. It's okay. I understand. Next up was Cassidy, and she made a volcano, which looked so cool. She was definitely going to get a high score. And then Marley whispered in my ear, Don't worry, she's not scoring any marks today. What are you talking about? Watch and see. Cassidy's volcano didn't erupt the way she wanted it to. And that's because Marley swapped the bicarbonate soda with sugar. I was so mad at Marley. But later after school, I found her crying. Marley, why are you crying? Yes, I'm so sorry for what I did to Cassidy. I'm going through a lot right now with my dad being sick, you know. Um, yeah, it's okay. Cassidy is smart. She'll do well in her next project. Before I could head home, Marley invited me to hang out with her and some of her other friends at the Burger Creek. So, what are you wearing to the fall dance? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. We can go with my dad tomorrow. But I thought your dad was sick. Oh, yeah, I meant my mom. Oh, great. When we were at the dance the next night, Marley gave me a package to keep away in my bag, which I found so strange. Arya, hey, take this. What is it? I'll explain when we're inside. When I opened the package, it was a bottle of olive oil. I didn't understand. Where's the bottle? In my purse? Marley, what's going on? Just pour a little on the dance floor over there. It's where Cassidy is. Marley, no! I refuse to do that! What if someone did that to you? How bad could it be? She will slip, land on her butt, and everyone will laugh. The little fun. Just do it. And plus, it's part of the initiation if you want to hang out with the popular crowd. How bad could it be? Pretty bad, it turns out. Cassidy slipped and landed on her arm instead. And then the other kids who tried helping her up also slipped. The dance had to be stopped, and Cassidy was taken in an ambulance to the hospital. As soon as I could, I ran outside the dance hall and found Marley with her dad. He looked completely healthy. Marley, you told me your dad was sick. Well, he's better now. I felt like such a buffoon for listening to Marley. The next day at school, the principal made an announcement at the morning assembly. If senior prom is cancelled, we will give the guilty party three days to confess. What does that even mean? I couldn't deal with Marley right now, so I moved over to the empty seat next to me. She didn't even care about what happened to Cassidy. During recess, I tried to avoid Marley completely, but she still didn't get the picture. What's your problem? My problem? Marley, Cassidy has to wear a cast for who knows how long, and the prom is cancelled all because of us! Us? You're crazy! You put the oil on the dance floor! Marley spoke so loudly that everyone there turned to look at us. Soon after, I was called to the principal's office, and I was shocked to see my parents there as well. Thank you for coming, Mr. and Mrs. Miller. Arya's foolish behavior caused a terrible accident. It is for this reason we have decided to suspend her for two weeks. She will also have to miss prom. Thank you. We appreciate your leniency. Please convey our thanks to Cassidy's parents as well, who decided not to press charges. We will deal with Arya. Deal with me? I hadn't seen Mom so stern before. And it was all Marley's fault! Arya, you have been acting up for a while now. But this behavior is not acceptable. I could hear their voices, but I was so angry at Marley for letting all the blame fall on me. That I wasn't really listening, but Mom knew how to grab my attention. You're grounded for a month. A month? That's not fair! 
One more word, young lady, and it will be two months. I just kept thinking about how I was going to get back at Marley, and now it felt like I was being bolted to the floor of my house, not able to move about anywhere other than here. As I sat in my room, thinking about how I disappointed my parents and how foolishly I acted for the past few weeks following Marley around, I broke down crying because everything was so messed up. And then I felt a hand on my shoulder. Cassidy, when did you get here? I just came to say I forgive you. Oh, Cassidy, I'm so, so sorry. I don't know how things got so out of control. I'm so sorry for choosing Marley over you. Oh, it had to happen. Marley is a firecracker. She just needs someone to light her fuse and then it blows up. Usually in your face. Wait, what? You knew about her? Oh, yeah. She was at one of my old schools a long time ago and got suspended. But this was a lesson you had to learn on your own. A word of advice. Don't try to get even. People like her just don't know when to stop. I had no idea why I doubted my mom and dad. Or Cassidy. Thank you for being such a good friend, Cassidy. The next day, mom and dad weren't so angry anymore. All was forgotten, and it was time to look forward. Morning, sleepyhead. Did you rest well? I made your favorite pancakes after a few months everyone at school forgot about what happened at the fall dance but i couldn't help but notice that cassidy was not her usual self is everything okay with you no i need to tell you something okay when i came to this school it wasn't my choice i lived in an orphanage most of my life and finally a nice couple adopted me it was just a coincidence that they lived close to your school wow and summer camp did your parents send you there too? No, the orphanage sent me there, before I could go off with my adoptive parents. Oh, Cassidy, why did you keep this a secret? Because I just wanted to be a normal kid. But now I have to leave again. The couple that adopted me, they lost their business and they can't afford to take care of me. I was heartbroken when I heard her story, and I felt so bad for even being jealous of her once. A few days before Cassidy could be sent back to the orphanage, I invited her over to my house for supper. Thank you all for having me. It was lovely meeting you. Well, you could stay longer, if you want to. Dad handed a letter to Cassidy, which I already knew what it was, and we all smiled waiting for her reaction. You're adopting me? I immediately hugged her and we both <laughs> cried. Yes! Welcome home, sister. Hey, stop! That's my car! I ran towards the two men towing my car from my school parking lot. As soon as I got to them, I shoved one of them. Hey, relax. We're here to deliver your new car and take this one. I stared at him in confusion until he pointed to a brand new sports car with a red ribbon. A Lamborghini? Oh yeah, baby! Hello, I'm Nate, and I live in the luxurious Upper East Side in New York. Please like and subscribe. Growing up, my sister Lily and I had everything except a mother who abandoned us when we were very young. After she left, Dad immersed himself into his job, and in just a few years, he became one of the wealthiest men in the city. We barely saw him, but we did see his money. He bought us whatever we wanted, from the latest designer clothes to the latest gadgets, which made me popular at school. Dude, is that the latest iPhone? Where did you buy it? They're not even in stores yet. Oh, my dad spoke to Apple, and they made a custom one for me. I loved the look on their faces when they realized just how rich I was. By the time I was in high school, Lily and I were pretty much living on our own. That meant we got into a lot of trouble, but dad always bought our way out. Until one day, when Lily used his credit card to buy dozens of designer clothes and hand them out to homeless people. When he got a call from the bank, he came home immediately. What were you thinking? Chill, Dad. I was only doing some charity work. Something you should do more of. You're grounded for a month and I'm taking all your credit cards. Fine. At least I got you to come home. She stormed into her room and slammed the door. What happened to my sweet little girl? Dad looked so sad. But what did he expect when he was always gone? On my 18th birthday, for instance, he surprised me with a brand new sports car. I mean, it was a pretty cool gift, but he wasn't there to celebrate with me. Inside the new car was an envelope, and in it was a birthday card and a black credit card. Dear son, you only turn 18 once. Please use the card to have some fun with your friends. Oh, and I hope you like the color I chose for the car. If not, let me know and I'll send another one. 
The card wasn't even in his handwriting. I'm sure he had his assistant write it. Nice ride. Does it come with good looks? I looked up to see my arch nemesis Brody with his foot on the hood of my car. I heard a laugh and I turned in shock to find my own girlfriend Maya laughing at Brody's joke. Seriously, Maya? What? It was funny. Sometimes I wondered why I was still dating her. I revved the engine, but Brody didn't budge. Move. Or what? Instead of trying to run me over, let's go to the racetrack and see if your little toy has any power to beat me. Unless you're afraid to lose. Ever since I caught Brody cheating in a math test, and I reported him, he hated my guts, and he did everything he could to agitate me, including flirting with Maya, who seemed to enjoy it. Sometimes I wondered if she really cared about me at all. That's the problem with being rich. You never know who genuinely likes you. Right after Brody's taunt, Maya started to chant and everyone else joined in. Race! 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 I'll never lose to you and that junk you call a car. Let's give the people what they want. See you at the racetrack. A few minutes later, Brody and I were squared off at the racetrack while our friends cheered wildly. I gripped my wheel and revved my engine. Brody and I exchanged cold looks, then we were off. Brody's car was obviously not a match for mine, so in just a few seconds he was trailing. I checked the rearview mirror to see how far behind he was, but that was a mistake. Because next thing I knew, I was veering off the track and right into a ditch, while Brody sped off to an easy win. I was so enraged that I jumped out of my car and started kicking it in frustration. Ugh, stupid, stupid car! Brody laughed in my face, so I punched him and he fell. He got up and charged at me, but our friends held him back. I then walked home, leaving the car behind for the insurance company to pick up and fix. As months passed, Dad became even busier and hardly noticed mine and Lily's bad behavior and extravagance. Since he took away Lily's credit cards, she got into more trouble by shoplifting and fighting at school. While I indulged in more car races, crashing multiple times and incurring huge repair bills, I even took out a page of Lily's book by literally making it rain dollar bills in the streets of New York for people to scramble for. I was living without a care in the world and spending money like I had a bottomless vault of it. However, that all changed when one day Maya and I got to my house to find mountains of stuff out on our front lawn. Oh my god, are you being robbed? Just then, Lily shouted from my bedroom window. Nate, come in here. She sounded panicked, so I took the stairs two at a time and I found her in tears. They took everything. Who's they? Some scary men. Dad's talking to them downstairs. I ran out looking for Dad and found him talking to some men in dark suits and even darker sunglasses. Dad, what's going on? I'm sorry, son. We've lost everything. These are debt collectors, and they're here to auction our property, including the mansion. What? I could hardly breathe at this point. Just then, an auctioneer's announcement caught my attention. The next item is the latest Lamborghini model. We will start the bid at $200,000. Do I hear 205? 250. Do I hear 255? After a while, he banged his gavel. Sold to the gentleman in red. This was starting to feel like a bad dream. Not only had my car been sold right before my eyes, it had been sold to Brody. Don't worry, I'll take good care of it. Whatever, dude. Come on, Maya, get out of the car. I opened the passenger door, but Maya didn't move. Actually, I don't want to be your girlfriend now that you're poor. I'll date Brody now. Oh, wow. Talk about a slap in the face. Leave, both of you. Brody <laughs> laughed as he jumped into the driver's seat. Guess you've finally lost everything to me. I couldn't believe Maya had just dumped me like that. But I guess it was really good riddance. She had been a horrible girlfriend. A very long and tiring bus ride later, we arrived at our lake house. Only, it wasn't a lake house anymore. It was a restaurant. Dad, what? I'm so sorry, kids. I sold the lake house to a friend, but she's agreed to let us stay in the garage. Please say you're joking. There's no way I'm living there. You won't. You'll go live with Mrs. Brock and her family. I left Dad and Lily arguing and walked into the musty room. There's barely anything in here. You'll get used to it. The room was smaller than my bedroom. And this was supposed to be what? Our whole house? The next morning, Dad took me to the side of the lake that I'd never been to before. Why did you bring me here? We'll be working here now. I'm sorry, what? We'll receive fish from the fishermen and sell it in the village. As I stared at my dad, a girl jumped out of a boat, carrying a bucket full of fish. 
She dumped the fish near my feet and started washing them. I couldn't stand the smell, so I turned around and tried my best not to gag. What? The girl started to laugh. I was about to say something mean when she stood up. Hi, I'm Rose. Sorry I called you a wuss. I've just never seen anyone grow so pale at the sight of fish. Uh, that's all right. Just not used to it. I'm Nate. I'm new here. New? Then you must come to the bonfire tonight and you can see our beautiful village under the stars. After the couple of days that I'd had, that sounded perfect, so I agreed to go. Rose and I hung out a lot after that. I learned that she made and sold beautiful jewelry. I even started to ditch dad's fish selling business just so I could watch her make jewelry. I was crushing hard. One afternoon, she showed up with a picnic basket and asked me to take a walk with her. She led me through dense bushes until we came to a suspension bridge. The steps were made from wooden planks tied together by ropes and suspended by even more ropes. Yeah, no thanks. Rose must have sensed my fear because she took my hand. You'll be fine, I promise. Just trust me. We crossed the shaky bridge and came to a clearing. A whooshing sound came from behind the trees. What's that sound? It's a surprise. Wait here. Rose disappeared behind the trees, and after a few minutes, she asked me to join her. And when I did, my heart almost stopped. She was wearing a bathing suit, and that's not all. She was standing on top of a waterfall, ready to jump into the clear pond below. Hurry! Take off your shirt! Let's jump! I took off my shirt and took her hand. One, two, three... I closed my eyes and we jumped, landing into the ice-cold water with a splash. That was the best afternoon of my life. When we got back to the restaurant, I was shocked to see my car parked outside. I got so excited thinking that dad had bought it back for me. I ran into the restaurant expecting to see him, only to find Brody and Maya sitting at a table. What are you doing here? My mom said that you were a fisherman now, and we just had to come and see for ourselves. I'm really not in the mood for any of your games, Brody. I took Rose's hand and turned to leave, but Maya stepped in front of us. She looked Rose up and down, like a predator sizing its prey. Aren't you going to introduce us to your girlfriend? She's not, um... Hi, I'm Rose, but I'm not Nate's girlfriend. Yet. I almost swallowed my tongue. Did she mean she wanted to be my girlfriend? Oh, she likes you, Nate. You could both be poor together. I mean, look at her cheap necklace. I made this. With what? Trash? Maya reached out to touch the necklace, but Rose slapped her hand away. Rose was so angry. And so was I. Don't you touch her, and don't you dare insult her again. Her necklace might not be expensive like yours, but she made it herself and it's beautiful. At least she's not a gold digger like you. Maya rolled her eyes and turned to Brody. Whatever, let's get out of here. Rose, I'm so sorry. Who are they? <laughs> she was close to tears, and I hated Maya and Brody for hurting her. My heart was pounding so fast as I stood close to her and leaned my forehead to hers. I wanted to kiss her so badly, and I was just about to, but suddenly Dad burst in looking breathless and pale. I stepped away from a blushing rose. Dad, are you okay? It's Lily. She's missing. Her friends say they saw her go into the woods. Why would she do that? It's so dangerous. We started a search and rescue mission, gathering all locals and some policemen. Hours later, we were almost giving up our search when we heard a noise behind some bushes. I ran towards the sound hoping to see Lily, but let out a scream when I came face to face with a bear. I stepped back slowly, then turned and ran as I shouted for Rose and the others to run too. Just then, Rose stumbled on a twig and fell. The bear was right on our heels, so I threw my torch towards it. And while it got distracted, I dragged Rose to her feet and we kept running until we caught up with Dad and his group. Bear! Dad ordered everyone to stand behind him, and we held our breath waiting for the bear to appear. But it never did. I guess I got tired of chasing you. A few meters from us, someone shouted that they had found Lily. We rushed and found her huddled under a tree, shivering and cold. Dad and I hugged her and sobbed in relief. We were so worried about you, Lily. I'm so sorry. I saw Maya and Brody at the restaurant, and I went to look for Nate so I could warn him, but I got lost. I hugged her more than carried her out of the woods. This was turning out to be the craziest day of my life. Later at the hospital, the doctor assured us that Lily would be okay. I expected Dad to be happy, but when the doctor left, he started to <laughs> sob uncontrollably. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. I sat next to him and rubbed his shoulder. No, it's not. Besides, Lily's fine now. 
If I hadn't lied... Lied about what? Everything. We're not poor, Nate. The auction was staged. We didn't lose anything. I wasn't in any debt. Dad might as well have grown two heads. What? I planned the whole thing. Why would you do that? I wanted to teach you and Lily a lesson. You'd become too spoiled and rebellious, and it was all my fault. So, you decided to punish us? I'm sorry, but can you call your time here punishment? I thought for a few minutes, and yeah, he had a point. I'd really enjoyed my new life, but still... What? What about my car? Dad smiled a little. Well, that's gone for real. Brody's mom bought it for him. You were putting your own life in danger. So, what happens now? As soon as Lily is well, we will leave and go back home. A few months ago, I'd have jumped at that, but now I wasn't so sure. I couldn't imagine leaving Rose. Even as I spoke with Dad, I missed her. I, I have to go see Rose. I walked out meaning to go to Rose's village, but I found her sitting at the hospital waiting area. How's Lily? She'll be fine. Uh, can we go somewhere and talk? We went to the beach and sat down on the sand. I explained everything to her, and when I told her what Dad had done, she burst out laughing. But when I told her that I'd be leaving soon, her laughter died. Will you come back? I'll come back, I promise. She lay her head on my shoulder, and I put my arm around her. My heart started to pound again, and I decided it was now or never. I needed to show her how I felt about her before leaving. I turned toward her, took a deep breath, and kissed her. She closed her eyes and kissed me back. And I knew I was definitely coming back. Back in the city, Dad got me a new car. He started spending more time with us. Lily went back to school, and I applied to a few colleges. So, have you decided where you want to go to college? Actually, yeah. I got accepted into one near the lake. Dad <laughs> smiled. Don't you mean near Rose? Having Dad tease me about a girl was kind of embarrassing, but he was right. I couldn't wait to see her again. A month later, Rose and I reunited, and I helped her set up a jewelry shop in the village. It became a popular place for tourists looking for handmade jewelry. To be honest, this was the happiest I'd ever been. And even though it took Dad's crazy plan to get me there, I was glad he did.